Hello and welcome to Tweet for Few and Pleasure. Today we have another video review and today we are reviewing the OnLap Portable Monitor. Now I don't know what version number it is because I'm too lazy to look it up. So here we can see, here for box, there's nothing special about it. We've got safety logos on there. We've got, oh it's an OnLap Monitor 2501M. Uh, the panel size is 15.6 inches, that's 16 9 ratio, resolution 1366 by 768. It allows MHL HDMI D, okay, VGA, optional cable, bloody hell, and an audio jack. 9300 milliamps battery, so I say 5 hour battery life. Uh, one watt speaker, two of them, so I'm assuming it's stereo. It power with 5 volt, 2 amps, so charge it by USB. I'm not going to read the rest because I can't be bothered. For anyone that cares, it's there. Although my autofocus is not bloody working on 1080. Right, anyway, so enough about the box, it looked pretty and all that, but we don't really care about how pretty it looks, do we? Now, inside the box, we have the following. We have this little thingy that's keeping it all protected. I'm sure I don't need to tell you that. We have the main device itself, but we'll come back to that later. And we have what's left in the box. We have... A charge cable for the device. Now, anyone wondering, it charges through um, micro USB. I'm sorry again, my autofocus is not working. I don't know what. Well, actually, I do know why. On 1080, it just, you know, doesn't work. But on 720, it does. And I don't know how to change it back to 720. So here we have a stand. I believe it's a stand. How did it stand with this, actually? Okay, and I'll bean to hold the wire back. We have this, which is to hold the mobile or the tablet. In fact, I should have got my tablet in order to show you how that works. And here we have a phone. Uh, sorry, not phone, this is a plug charger. It's basically just a USB to mains thing. I'm sure, as you can see, here. And then we got, again, this is the USB to mains bit. So, that bit, in fact, let's just get out of there. A lot of bloody, you know what, hassle just for a stupid little thing. Right, so there's the connector and there's the USB bit. All it does, it goes to the plug and all you do, you pop it in like so and apparently you twist it and it locks into place and this will charge up via USB. So basically the same things you can find all over the internet in order to charge your USB device. Next up we have a HDMI cable. This plugs into the side, I'm sure you gathered that. It's a standard HDMI, in fact, that bad. Standard HDMI. We'll be needing that in just a few minutes. And next up we have Nice cable. Now this is apparently VMHL to MHL. I can't comment if this works. My mobile phone or tablet does not support it. So yeah, I can't comment about that. Um, we've got the instruction manual now. Read before usage. No, I didn't. Uh, uh, I'm not going to read the entire thing. You don't really care too much. Basically, don't put heavy things onto it, you know, standard things. The product may be damaged if it falls over, blah, blah, blah. 
basically, don't be a dick with this product. For once, the English is very, very nice. For once. My product, what I tend to review so far, and every reviewer tend to have, tend to be in Chinese English. But beyond that, no, it's alright. Uh, oh, it's just showing all the ports there. We'll get to that in a minute. Right, so now we're going to the device itself. Now, ignore the sudden jump, because I've just got to change this to manual focus mode. Right, well, we should now be on manual focus mode. Should be. As you can see here for the fight itself. So, that's the company that makes it. There for serial number so you can claim it got stolen and then get that the police after me. Right, here for ports. We have here MHL. In fact, no, it's not over here. First of all, that's audio jack, MHL, HDMI, VGA, and the power supply. And here we have the ability to switch between battery and power supply. Simple. I'll just say one thing, it collects fingerprints. Oh, uh, we got a stereo speaker there, and we got a stereo speaker there. Right, device wise, there it is. Can't really comment much more about that. Now I'm not going to show you all the bits on the side because on the side we've got a lock thing, we've got to show you if it's low battery, we've got to show you if it's powered on, we've got brightness and whatnot. Options, sorry. But all you do, tap that to turn on, and there you go. Simple. Now if you read reviews online, you'll learn that apparently it takes a bit of time to start up. Yeah, it does, but that's only because of the auto scan mode. If you set it manually, it doesn't. Not for my opinion anyway. Now we don't have a VGA cable to test the computer. I did have a laptop down here ready to do so. But first of all, the only one we're going to show it working on is the HDMI cable. Because I've got all that set up. When it plugs in. Right, so we just got the HDMI plugged in. Now just ignore the dog in the background. She wants to be internet famous. And there you go, there for monitor. We now just switch to unmanual focus. So let's just turn the HDMI source on. I'm sure anyone can guess it within about 20 seconds. Now hopefully I have set it bright enough so you can actually see what is going on. If not, I'm very sorry, but there's little I can do about that. Right, just to let you know to start off with, the viewing angle. I'm looking at it from her side. In fact, I can see it quite well. And the PlayStation 3 now need to be updated. Right, I can see it from the side. I'll just say, can you see from the side? Can you? Right, well my brother can see it from the side, he's just not talking. He's actually just sitting there playing around on a laptop right now with a dog that's looking like she wants to eat the camera and the monitor. All right, ignore that. So yes, this is what it looks like. This is the screen. Simple. The response time looks right to me. Now we'll just load up the intro of Final Fantasy XIII because it's a fantastic one with loads of movement. But yeah, as you can see, it loaded up 1080p alright. Now the device said it only supports 720, so I am assuming it's able to downscale it, but it does it very well. Right, the monitor just attracted my dog's attention.
And as you can see from the camera, the audio in itself is not bad. The radio is spotless. I can't really complain. Now, it's not going to replace your home telly. It's not going to replace a laptop. It's designed for people who want a portable device. So far, I can't see any problems with it. There's no lacing issue, there's no artifact issue or anything. As a HDMI monitor, I can't fault it. It works well. The refresh rate, response rate seems good enough. The audio is not bad. You are able to turn it up and down. Turning it up makes it sound quite crappy though. So I'll just give you a heads up there. Battery life, I cannot comment on because I haven't had it for too long. But I charged up yesterday. I attempted to do this with you about twice now. But yeah, looks alright. Now, the color is alright. You can't, as I said, you can't really fault anything with this monitor right now. You can't even fault the cost, it was around £200 on Amazon. Yeah, there's a link in the description for anyone who wants to buy one. Although, if I was you, I'll hurry because they're nearly out of stock. Well, as you can see from that, it's alright. <laughs> I know this review, and now I can't go on and say for review on how fantastic here, because I don't have the technical means to be able to find all that out but I can run around in a circle for a minute and show you how fast the response rate is. Now I would imagine by way viewing it through the camera it's a crapper than what I am seeing. Um, I'm sure you'll understand that. And hopefully the camera picks this up. I was actually doing this with you earlier and the autofocus was not working and basically the entire thing was a piece of crap. But for anyone who watches playing games with Snap, we were just recently at this very point. As you can see, it is showing for Dark Point decently. It's showing. In fact, you can't really fault it. As you can see, you can see all the colours. Alright, you can see where it's dark, you can see where it's bright. The response rate is good. But yeah. Now, we just get on to resolution again. As I said earlier, it only supports 720. You may note the top right, it says 1080p. Now I'm assuming, as I said earlier, it's able to downscale it. For those interested, we'll just quickly go and see what it actually supports according to a PlayStation 3. So first of all, we'll try 576, so normal power television for SD. Works fine. As you can see top right, it just changed to 50 hertz and whatnot, and you can't fault it really. Oh, it stretches the image as well. So 720. Yep, can't fault that. Now that is native resolution according to the box. Now will it support 1080i? Some people do like 1080i. Yep, supports that fine. And 1080p just for the sake of it. Yep, supports that fine. Now, for anyone wondering, we're just going to show you one last thing about it. And then we're going to start wrapping up for a few because there's not much more I can say about it, to be honest. It's a monitor which you can plug in. Right, the thing I'm showing is the menu screen. So you have here 
free option when it works. That's not going to be the option, is it? It could be this one. Right, you're able to change the contrast, brightness, color adjustment, the color temperature. You're able to change the RSD timer, which is the overhead display. The language, you can reset everything, and there's a first number, so you might be able to update its firmware. Now, I was reading it only supported 720 originally, so maybe it's a newer firmware. And you have all the search, you have VGA, HDMI, MHL, and Auto Search. Now, I don't know what that does. Yeah, I don't know what that button does have a very... It's actually a mute button, actually. Yeah, right, the bottom to mute button. So you can't really fault that. Other than that, it's quite good. One thing I'll show you before I wrap this up, because, again, there's not much you can do for just a monitor, is there? Let's say I don't have the technical know-how how to actually show everything. Right, the next thing, I want to say, is this bit. This plastic is designed so you're able to put a smartphone and or tablet and hold it onto the monitor, which it would then hold onto during it. And all it does is a magnetic bit near the bottom here. Now, for anyone who might notice, this is going to be a problem. I would go upstairs to get my tablet, but admittedly I'm too lazy. We're going to use this instruction manual. Now, this is smaller than a 7-inch tablet. But assume this is a tiny bit bigger. Do you notice a problem, people? Yes. The problem is, if you actually put a mobile phone or a tablet into the bottom right plane, you'll actually find out it should cover the screen. There's literally no point. It would have been better off putting this at the back of a monitor. But, yeah, they didn't. And really, I don't really see anyone who's going to use this bit. Beyond that, oh, um, these things again, I don't actually know how these stand up, and to be honest, I don't really trust it. I would imagine, I imagine they just simply go like that and then hold it up at direct angle, but I don't know. To be honest, I wouldn't even use that stand. I know it came with the older model. But this model comes with a cover case. So, um, honestly, this review is kind of pointless. I could have summed it up in one word saying, this is a good monitor if you need for portability. If you need a monitor to take around places, fantastic. If you don't need a monitor you need to take around, but need a monitor that runs off battery, again, this is fantastic. But if you're looking for another monitor for around the house, you would be honestly better off buying a cheap TV because, again, it does pretty much the same job. 